with a glut of fine golf on offer in this part of Scotland. Nairn, or rather, more accurately, the Nairn, is the sometimes forgotten third leg of the heavyweight trifecta of courses that make the Highlands the bucket list destination for golfers the world around. And Nairn is unquestionably deserved of its place amongst those clubs. And yet, despite their proud history being a mecca for the travelling golfer and the custodians of a course capable of challenging the world's best, it's the welcome and feeling of intimacy that hits you the hardest when you arrive and long after you leave. Like many of the early Scottish golf clubs dotted around the coast, the Nairn Golf Club was founded when a local nobleman, Viscount Finlay, wanted to establish a formal club for the increasingly popular Scottish game. And much like Finlay himself, who would go on to big things, ultimately becoming Lord Chancellor, the club, its reputation and the course itself grew in stature from there. Land that we now refer to as the Lynx, the area that sits between the sea and the farmland, was often of little to no use for farmers and were often turned over to the locals for the purpose of golf. And Nairn has been reconfiguring that same piece of lynx land since its beginnings. One of the great but lesser known Scottish professionals, Archie Simpson, was responsible for the first routing, but it wasn't long until old Tom himself left his stamp in 1890 upon an invitation from Finlay to extend the course prolific Scottish professional and early golf course architect James Braid made multiple changes over a number of years and has arguably the biggest influence on the course. Other contributors include Ben Sayers and more recently Mackenzie Niebert who have completed further renovation work in the preparation for the amateur of 2021. As such it should come as no surprise that the routing has evolved significantly and those changes over time have made the creation of the second shorter course possible, the Cameron, on the higher ground near the clubhouse. The championship course today is a stern test for the low handicapper. Off the tee is a rigorous examination of your long game. Penal hazards flank the fairways and guard the greens. Green sites that are revered for their pace are surrounded with contours that all too often repel the ball away from the target. The result is a course where its challenge hits you retrospectively rather than when you stand on the first tee, leaving you scratching your head for an explanation. There is a lot of variety. Going out, you play out and along the coast and thread your ball through the gorse line fairways. And on your way back, and holes 13 through 15 play uphill and inland through the pine trees. Of them all though, the 8th probably best captures the true spirit of Nairn. Short in length, with nothing jumping out at you when you arrive on the tee. Drivable for the big hitter, yet it's filled with intricate mounds and obstacles that are quick to divert your ball towards danger. It also remains one of the few holes in the course where little has changed since old Tom's work 130 years ago. That whole stretch around the turn, in fact, really is the epitome of Nairn. Saturated with gorse, with a sea in view, and often in play. And a quaint ice house adjacent to the halfway house, on nine reminding you of the town's roots as a fishing village. It's the moment in the round where you either breathe a sigh of relief with a changing wind direction or prepare to do battle on your way home. A visit to Nairn is not complete, however, without a visit to the archive room. Of all the great rooms in golf, the big room at the Royal and Ancient or the fabled lunch at Muirfield, the archive room at Nairn must be one of those most special of rooms you will see the product of a passionate membership who, in 2007, took it upon themselves to catalogue the club's history and create somewhere to celebrate everything that has happened at Nairn. 
from its beginnings through to the Walker Cup and Curtis Cup history, it's a wondrous room, filled with artefacts from every era and almost always someone on hand who was only too keen to showcase them over a wee dram. We're fortunate because even in front of me here, this is a book, The Art of Golf. Now, the Art of Golf is a bit of the book in golf, and this is Viscount Finlay's own book, found in, in London, and that's a copy of the book, but the original book's in the cupboard, so that's, that's a great thing, and, and our, our colleague Alistair Allen, he got all this duplicated. We have the bust of Effie Fairley there, who's a very prominent family in their day in terms of golf. And it's Fairley family that got the open to Prestwick, the original open to Prestwick, along with Tom Morris. We have the honours boards outside, for the members that were killed in the war that, and the book that Alistair Allen put together. And also we have a, a Ben Hogan putter. There was Ben Hogan's own putter. And this actually came to us through Frank Rennie of Prestwick. Nairn is a great test of golf in a world where width, angles and playability are the gold standard. Nairn breaks the mould with its difficulty. There are no towering dunes or gimmicks. It's a pure, honest test of golf. And it's for this reason that Nairn has rightly played host to the world's best over its history, including the Walker Cup in 99 and the Curtis Cup in 2012. And the recent winner of the amateur in 2021, as his name to many greats that prevailed over the links at Nairn. Whilst the course is not somewhere Archie Simpson or Old Tom would necessarily recognise today, the spirit of the club would almost certainly feel familiar. Perhaps that's the greatest testament to the Nairn. How to be proud of your origins, but tireless in making changes to leave it better for future generations. It is indeed a lesson on how to remain relevant and still maintain a connection with the past. <laughs>